17. I want to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded and please turn off all cell phones. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Forrest? For the last time, present. Mr. Hill? Here. Ms. Moon? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Mrs. Vazel? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Morris? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Thank you. Um, I'd like this group from Emerson Williams, and they do the ukulele, and there's others involved who would come to the front. They're here. Lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Guys, that was great. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Emmett, we have a student recognition this morning, from, uh, this afternoon, from Emerson Williams. Uh, we certainly do, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am very uh, proud to have in the audience uh, performing for us this evening the Ukulele Club from uh, Emerson Williams. This is a partnership with the Keene Foundation After School um, uh, process that. Uh, Judy Keene has been involved with and been very supportive of. I see Carolyn Fazina, who is our coordinator across the district. Um, so this program comes from the Keene Foundation. And I had the opportunity to uh, see the students perform at a recent town meeting. And I said, you have got to hear this group of students. So um, without further ado, I see we have Miss Caravella, we have Miss Nunn, and we have Miss Fortuna, along with Miss Takura, our principal at Emerson Williams. And um, we'll get started with the performance. Good evening, Mr. Emmett and Board of Education members. Uh, my name is Neela Takor, and I'm principal of Emerson Williams, the very proud principal of Emerson Williams. And as Mr. Emmett said, we have with us tonight our ukulele club, and we also have some special guest singers who are going to be joining the ukulele club this evening. Um, as Mr. Emmett said, our ukulele club is part of our Keen on Kids after school programming at Emerson Williams. Um, Judy Keen, I'd like to thank you very much, um, you and your Keen Foundation, for bringing the ukulele club and so many other wonderful programs um, to our students after school. In addition to the ukulele club, our students also participate in computer coding, mad science, yoga, Spanish, cooking, magic, running, and mini movers. And these programs take place after school, Monday through Thursdays, from 3 to 4. Um, we are really excited to have our ukulele club with us this evening. Um, these are beginners. They really have just had a few sessions together, practicing after school. And our club, believe it or not, is even bigger than this group that we have with us here this evening. This is just some of our members um, here. Their teachers are phenomenal. We have Miss Caravella and Miss Fortuna, who are our music teachers. And um, they have led these students to do some wonderful things. Before I th turn things over to the ukulele club, I also just wanted to give a shout out to Emerson Williams. For those of you who are going to be up bright and early tomorrow morning, if you're able to tune in to WFSB Channel 3 with Scott Haney, you will see a very special live surprise, probably between 5.15 and 6.15 a.m. I won't give away the secret surprise, but if you're able to um, turn on your TV tomorrow morning, there will be an Emerson Williams surprise tomorrow morning as well. Um, so at this time, I would like to introduce our two fantastic teachers, Ms. Caravella and Ms. Fortuna. Hi everyone, I'm Emily Caravella, instrumental music teacher at Emerson, and I'm the keen ukulele teacher as well. Um, I absolutely loved learning ukulele when I was growing up in my music programs, and I'm really grateful to the Keen Foundation for allowing me to start this at Emerson Williams. I have so enjoyed teaching these awesome kids. Um, we have actually only had six weeks of class. And in addition to that, we had some um, technology issues, actually. They usually read from leads uh, sheets that are on video. So the students in front of you actually memorized this with a day's notice. So they are used to playing with music and video playing in front of them, and they memorize this entire thing just for you. Um, another really awesome thing about this group of students is they're in grades three to six, 
And most of them actually play two instruments. Every single fourth to sixth grader that you see in front of you is also in the band and orchestra at Emerson Williams. So to say these kids work hard is an understatement. They are amazing. Um, I would like to say thank you to Miss Katie Nunn, who um, actually learned ukulele with us and is nice enough to support us and play with us for this event. She's a big kid in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also want to thank my awesome new colleague, Katie Fortuna, who prepared our amazing vocalist. And I'm going to let her speak. So just like uh, so many members of our Emerson Williams student body are playing instruments, we also have a ton of singers. Each of the singers you see are representatives from our fifth grade chorus. However, all of the members that you see, all ukuleles, all boom markers, are either in the sixth grade chorus, the fifth grade chorus, or are singing every single day in their classes. And we'll have some performances coming up in December. So it's really awesome to get to team up and use all of our music and all of these ways together. So we would just like to thank you for inviting us and thank you for your amazing support of music education in Weathersfield Public Schools. We hope you enjoy our performance. Thank you very much. Very well done.
Only one song? <laughs> <laughs> well, what a great way to start a meeting. Thank you again. Okay, we'll continue with our meeting. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on October 24th, 2017. Are there any corrections? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. A second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Those minutes are an abstain. abstain. Those minutes are approved. And also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the Special Board of Ed meeting on November 6, 2017. Are there any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Any abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. Okay, <clears throat> so those minutes are approved. Okay, well, tonight is a little bittersweet for all of us. We're saying goodbye to two valued members of our Board of Ed, a board we are all so proud of because we've worked so hard together and we're so cohesive, and we were never interrupted or distracted by politics. We were always focused on the goal of doing what's best for our children. And so, Janet Vassell, you will be sorely missed by your colleagues. You have always been impressed by how close, we've always been impressed by how close you've kept your ears to the ground, always listening for the issues that are most important to the parents and their children. And you have brought a unique perspective to our work. We will miss your very thoughtful questions, and of course, let us not forget your timekeeping skills. <laughs> And on a serious note, I've always known that whenever I heard from you, it deserved to be taken seriously. I know you will continue to be active in the community. Your tremendous energy is an asset to our town, and I wish you and your family all the best. Thank okay. you, Mrs. Grotto. Do you want me to say something? <laughs> You, uh, sure. <laughs> well, it was nice to go out in a bang with Emerson Williams' kids <laughs> here, uh, especially since uh, a parent of Emerson Williams' kids, myself. So it was kind of like a gift. So thank you. Um, and thank you for the nice words. I really have learned a lot. Um, I have a totally different perspective on how the education process works um, from, you know, kindergarten to 12th grade. and. Um, behind the scenes, all the things that I was completely unaware of. So for the general public, when they don't understand how something works, um, it's probably a good idea to reach out to one of us, cause, or one of the new board members, um, and, and get enlightened by how the process works. It's not as quick, quick, as easy as a one, two, three punch answer, as much as we'd like it to be. Um, and I really believe that that is probably the one thing I will take the hardest that I've learned the most that I can understand. So when I watch you guys or when I read about something or hear about something, I tend to take a step back and like Mrs. Granado had mentioned, um, when someone reaches out to me or I hear something, I, I quickly um, address it with her and um, I just feel very strongly about it. And, um, but I always wanted to know the facts. So, um, and the how-to and so forth. So thank you very much for that, and I appreciate that. And um, I enjoyed working with everyone. I felt like <coughs> we were a great team. However, um, I did put my continuing education on hold myself for the last two years. So at this point, um, you know, I've signed up for my continuing ed classes, and so I will be doing that and hopefully be done in another year and a half. So thank you very much for everyone's um, support, and I really appreciate it, and I enjoyed my time here, so thank you. Oh, 
Okay. And Matthew Forrest, congratulations on your election to the town council. We know you'll be a valuable contributor to the health and well-being of our town. We want to thank you for all your work on our board. You've pr brought an insightful perspective to our debates and our work and have never hesitated to challenge conventional wisdom. We know that you will continue your heart heartfelt advocacy for education as a representative on the council. Good luck, Matthew. We will miss you and take great care of that beautiful family of yours. Thank you. <clears throat> where I go? This is where you go. <laughs> um, it's, it, I, I, in many respects, of course, I, I don't want to leave because the board, um, you know, every board has its own kind of feel to it, I guess. And this board seems, it does, work so well together that in some respects it's kind of, it's tough that it's only two-year terms and that we have an election. Of course, it's, you know, part of our government, but um, when, you, when you finally kind of get your groove after you get a new board in and maybe it takes six months or seven months and you get a feel sort of where everyone's coming from and then you get your groove and then, and then you have seven or eight or nine months left and then there's an election and then, then we're here today and it happens so quickly in a way that it's, it's sad because we really, we're really in stride right now and I'm sure that'll continue with the next board, but it's when you have a good thing and you care about the town as we all do that it's kind of sad to see a board that's transferring over that works so well together. So, I mean, of course, I'll have a different role in this town, but um, you will be missed in my heart and this group will be missed for how well we work together. And, uh, and I, I also want to say that, um, you know, Janet leaving is, I, I mean, I think we've had a great time, Janet, together and we've been on various boards and commissions, not boards and commissions, but subcommittees of this board. <coughs> and it's been so fantastic to work with you. And you. I, when I found out that you were not running for re-election, I, I really, I, I think that the board is going to suffer. I mean, not really in a bad way, but because your perspective, experience, real life attitude, and um, contribution to this board as a, as a strong working member will be missed. It really will be. And, and I think that that's gonna be something that our town is not gonna be better because you will have left. And um, for the rest of you, um, or for the remaining board members and the new board members, I can't wait to work with you as we move forward because at the end of the day, maybe this is an Emerson Williams theme being that my mother worked there and I went there, but, um, you know, you see a performance like that and then you just sort of know why you put in the thousand hours a year doing this and it makes it all sort of right in one fell swoop. And I hope that when we work with the town council and the town council works with the board that we'll see all of that um, camaraderie ship come together, the politics sort of soften and uh, it will be as good as it is here right now with this board. And I wish the next board the best. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to um, have a recess for the purpose of swearing in the new board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Nobody. Any abstentions? Okay, we'll take a five minute, probably longer recess.
I'd like to call this meeting back to order. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Only, only those that have been newly elected or reelected. If you'd please go up to the podium with uh, Mrs. Sano. No, we're already here. No, you're fine. Yes. Good. Kevin. Yes. Yes. In the front row. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Point in either. Hey, it get, it all happens. <laughs> if I may ask you all to raise your right hands, uh, Kevin Hill, Polly Moon, John Cassio, Ginger McCurdy, Elaine Steinmiller Paradise, and Chris Haley, uh, please repeat after me. I swear or sincerely affirm, as the case may be, 
that I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States. That I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Connecticut. And the Constitution of the State of Connecticut. So long as I continue citizen thereof. As a member of the Wethersfield Board of Education, to the best of my ability, so help me God, or under penalty of perjury. Thank you. Congratulations. Now, at, at this juncture in the meeting, I ask for a nomination for chairperson of the Wethersfield Board of Education. Mr. Emmett? Yes. Uh, two years ago, I had the pleasure of nominating Bonnie, Bonnie, Bobby. Bobby. Sorry. <laughs> Whoever she is. <laughs> Bobby doesn't work here anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nominating Bobby Granato as chairperson. And it's with great honor that I do so again. Although this board, its leadership, and the administration have had some rocky times, with Bobby's leadership, we all have worked diligently to keep politics out of our decisions and never lost track of why we're here to improve and advocate for our school system. Bobby has made her chairmanship a full-time job, <laughs> especially on rainy days, uh, bringing new energy, vision, enthusiasm, and most importantly, cooperation and fellowship among board members, staff, students, parents, and community. The next two years will be some of the most challenging for school districts and will require new ideas, experienced leadership, and a unified board. Bobby has the qualifications and courage to keep this board moving forward. Please join me in support of Bobby Granato for board chair. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Just a few comments, sir. Um, Bobby and I go way, way back. Not too far. <laughs> How far? About five years old. <laughs> so, um, she's always been a great leader, whether she's been in school or a swimming instructor at Mill Woods. Mm -hmm. She's always had a positive attitude towards anything she undertakes. And um, what most, what's most important to all of us sitting at this side of the dais is that she puts the children first. So I am happy to second the nomination for Bobby Granado as chair of the Wethersfield Board of Education. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Mrs. Bobby Hughes Granado, chair of the Wethersfield Board of Education. <laughs> Now, at this point in time, I ask for a nomination for the Vice Chairperson Secretary of the Wethersfield Board of Education. Yes. I, I would be very pleased and very honored to offer Kevin Hill to be the Vice Chair or the Secretary of the Wethersfield Board of Education. I've gotten to know Kevin pretty well over the last two years that he's served with us. Kevin has been a steady voice of calm and of reason. I can't remember how many times we've gotten his four o'clock emails regarding the budget situation up at the, at the state capitol, which gave us all insight that we didn't otherwise have and kept us calm when it looked like things might be not so good for us. But it is always wonderful to have those and to have that calm voice. He'll bring a wonderful effect to this board, as he always has. He'll be an excellent vice chair, 
and it pleases me to no end to be able to offer his nomination for vice chair. Do I have a second? Yes. I would like to second the nomination of Kevin Hill for vice chair. He holds a unique position on, on this board, combining experience as a government affairs consultant with two master's degrees and the experience of having gone through the Wethersfield Public Schools not so very long ago. <laughs> Perhaps more importantly, Kevin and his wife have twins who recently started first grade at Hanmer School, so he will be our bridge to parents and children currently experiencing the Wethersfield Schools firsthand. And as a bonus, he is definitely tall enough to see the big picture. <laughs> it is my honor to second his nomination for vice chair of the Wethersfield Board of Education. Thank you, Ms. McCurdy. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Mr. Hill, congratulations. <laughs> okay, are we done? We're we finished. Move on? We've got a couple of action items. Okay. To see. Well, we are going to move on as a brand new board. Um, we're going to be doing our action items tonight. Elaine, would you please read <laughs> action item 6A? Move, that, move to ratify the three-year agreement between the Wethersfield Board of Education and the Wethersfield School Administrators Association. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Mr. Yes, if Emmett. I could, Mrs. Granado, this um, is a, an agreement with the uh, Wethersfield uh, Administrators Association. This was a, uh, a process that we went through over the course of the fall. Uh, I know that uh, Ms. Steinmiller Paradise and Ms. Fitzpatrick were both on this particular committee. Um, this agreement came through the process of mediation. Um, just, you know, some of the highlights of it in terms of wages um, for the 18 19 school year. Uh, the administrators will take a 0% uh, GWI increase with no step. In 1920, uh, a 1.5% 1 GWI with step. And in 2020-21, a 2% gross uh, wage increase with a uh, step increase. Uh, they have agreed with the insurance contribution to increase the insurance contribution each year. 18-19 uh, will be 20%. 1920, 21%. And 2021 will be a 22% contribution. Um, I believe that this contract certainly is fair, uh, and they certainly demonstrated some strong leadership um, given the difficult budget climate. Um, our attorney, uh, Patrick McHale, had noted that of all the municipalities that had uh, negotiated administrator contracts, uh, none of them represented a zero increase over the three years. So I think that demonstrates some uh, real leadership. Uh, on the part of our administration, and I um, support your ratification of this particular um, contract. Okay. Any other discussion? Chris? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make a comment. I think the whoever the, on the negotiators on our side did a very nice job on the health benefits and the insurance issues. Very good forward thinking. So I just wanted to pass that uh, compliment along. Thank you. Greatly appreciated there, uh, Mr. Healy. One of the things that the administrators um, also have the reputation of having, they were the first group that moved over to the HSA, uh, which all of our bargaining units, with the exception of secretaries and pairs, are now in. So um, it's certainly, certainly good leadership there. Thank you. Polly? Um, I just wanted to, um, first of all, um, thank um, the, uh, the uh, board's uh, team who spent, the, spent time on that. It's not an easy... Um, it's not an easy task, so thank you, Diane and Elaine. Um, I also really appreciate the fact that um, the administrators um, have stepped up. They've been, they're, first of all, we're very lucky because we have a fabulous uh, administrative staff, but I also appreciate the fact that um, the, uh, uh, the, the terms that have been negotiated are very mindful of, of um, uh, our present budget situation, and um, I, I just think it's very important that uh, uh, you, you all know how very much we appreciate uh, 
what a great group of people we have who have moved our district forward, and I appreciate the fact that, uh, that you've worked with the board on this contract. Um, those things are never easy. But so thank you very much. Thanks, Polly. Anyone else? Okay. Um, we'll vote. All those in favor of this aye. motion? Aye. aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Polly, would you read motion 6B for us? Yep, just as soon as I can find it. All right. Um, <clears throat> can we go back to paper this year? <laughs> <laughs> not, in, not in the budget. Oh, okay. We're going to have the money. Uh, move that the War uh, Weathersfield Board of Education approve the 2017-2018 revised operating budget of $57,310,439. Is okay, is there any is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Diane? Yeah, just to get, provide an overview of this uh, reduction scenario. Um, as you know, uh, the budget process this past year has been absolutely arduous and very difficult. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to deal with and you know we ranged from potentially in the original governor's budget I believe Weathersfield was going to receive approximately a million dollars more in ECS then it went to a, a about a million dollar reduction then it was 9.3 um, when all the dust settled the ECS funding reduction uh, for Weathersfield is $467,443 um, given that total, um, what we did as an administrative team is we took a look at um, areas which we could recognize savings and not burden the town at this point in time with, with the reduction. Um, this re list represents a total of two and a half positions. Um, these are positions that are not currently filled. There are no um, obligations with regard to unemployment with these positions. Um, so we're looking at the instructional supervisor. That was a position uh, that was vacated over the course of the summer. We posted for that position but did not fill it, knowing that the budget situation was um, uh, kind of uncertain. So at this point in time, we look not to fill that position for the remainder of this year, recognizing savings uh, with salary total of 120000 Right now at Silas Dean, uh, we had the uh, termination of an employee. At this point in time, we have a long-term sub in that position. The person is, in fact, certified. We'll maintain that position as a long-term sub position for the rest of this year with the intention of filling that position permanently next year. What that does is with our reduction scenarios, one of the reduction scenarios we had was to uh, reduce the number of guidance staff at the high school and move them over to the middle school. Um, we didn't find that that was the optimal result. It certainly would have increased the caseloads for guidance counselors at the high school. So this was the optimal way to, uh, to maintain the position and hold it for next year. With regard to uh, Weathersfield High School Science, we had a late uh, resignation and we hired a new science teacher. We recognized savings of $45,000 there. In addition to the science position, Weathersfield High School English, we have a long-term sub replacement for the 17-18 school year. This individual is currently certified. And what we're looking to do for the 18-19 uh, school year is we have a, a teacher at the elementary level that will likely move into that particular position. So we have some flexibility there. At this point in time, we're looking at savings of uh, approximately $40,000. Highcrest Special Education, we received a uh, retirement uh, effective the 18th of uh, September. The position uh, has been filled and uh, we recognize the savings there of $50,000. We had at Weathersfield High School a media lab assistant that resigned in June. Uh, this was a position that we had intended to fill. At this point in time, we are not going to fill that position. Um, we'll hold that in abeyance and hopefully fill it for next year. Again, recognizing savings of $38,000. And then the transition coordinator, as you may recall, we had a full-time transition coordinator um, who retired at the end of September. The intention was, in an effort to um, get to the 2.06% increase where we are for this budget, we took that transition coordinator and moved it from a full-time to a part-time position. Uh, at this point in time, we're going to hold that position in advance as well, and that will save uh, 30000 
Finally, last but not least, um, obviously, as you know, on the 21st of uh, August, when the governor came forward with his executive order and uh, ECS totals were you know, minus 9.3 million, we did an immediate budget freeze. Um, realistically speaking, to maintain a budget freeze for the remainder of the year it is just not realistic. We have to buy supplies, we have to buy materials and make sure that kids have what they need to succeed. With that in mind, what we propose to do is to um, open the spending lines uh, with a 70% cap for the remainder of the 17-18 school year. This will provide us with, uh, we think, enough of a cushion to get us through the year. We're hopeful that the budget situation is favorable toward the end of the year and we can buy out the rest of what we have budgeted for the 17-18 school year. So we're recognizing savings there of $97,443 couple of other points to be aware of. One of the things in our finance and information subcommittee meetings, we're talking about the issue of a deficit in the special education tuition line. With the budget being as it is, the state maintained the excess cost uh, formula for special education. So at this point in time, we budgeted rather conservatively at a 69% reimbursement rate. We expect the state will come in higher with the reimbursement rate and that difference will cover the deficit that we have in the special ed tuition line. In addition to that, just talking with our special ed supervisor today, we have a uh, student that will be returning uh, to Weathersfield High School for, or actually I believe the middle school actually, uh, from an out of district placement. So we continue to focus on bringing our kids back wherever we can to provide our quality services here in district. So. That's the, the general upshot here in terms of what we're looking at for this uh, budget scenario. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Diane? I'm um, referring to the, mem the email you sent us where you outlined some of the stuff that you just talked about. I'm very concerned about lifting the hiring freeze, I, lift, lifting the, um, I'm freezing the budget, I should say. We, the state just came out yesterday or today that we are already significantly in the red um, with the state budget. My concern is historically, um, around this time of year, the governor um, and Ben Barnes sent out their, their memo directing state agencies to cut their budgets by 5%. And also it was around this time last year that we saw a reduction in the ECS money. I'm concerned that that will be happening again this year. Um, I'm not sure when because we just got the budget, but I would assume that it's going to probably be happening in January and February. So while I realize that we, we need to purchase some things, I, I would suggest that we have a 50% cap at this point and we monitor this very closely because um, we have to be mindful that next year the state budget doesn't look any better that we're already in the red and the state really has nowhere to go because they've negotiated a contract with no layoffs. So they're very limited in where they can find these funds to balance the budget. Um, and they're going to look to municipal aid and they're going to look to the ECS um, because in many of the programs, they're not going to be able to take cuts. So I think we need to be mindful about that as we move forward. So. I um, would urge everyone to look at and consider a 50% cap and then review it after the first of the year. Okay, thank you, Di. Anyone else? John? Michael, do you see of any hiring before the first of the year? We have a couple of positions that we will need to fill with regard to paraprofessionals. For um, obviously, a student coming back in, we'll need paraprofessionals. So it's support. a mandate, basically, That's for these paras to have the child. Correct. Uh, so we're not Correct. just hiring just to hire. Correct. Right. So that's pretty much a mandated, with uh, I wanted to ask you that. You know, declared by their PPT. But well, we don't have the tuition for out of um, right. placement. Anyone else? Okay. This may not, Michael, this may not deal with the numbers, but I would like to know, and maybe in your Friday updates, sure. the, the names of the, the people that you have in these positions, like we have a, um, uh, uh, somebody who just said, oh, the, the, the transition coordinator. Mm -hmm. I don't, just a name and maybe a, 
is now that Mrs. Smith is now the transition coordinator. Yeah. Or it's something that you could put in the Friday. Yeah, it's so we, okay. If should we visit, we ask, you know, when we want to visit, maybe we'll know just a little yeah. line about them, if at, that's possible. At this point in time, there is the, that position, that transition coordinator is vacant. Oh, okay. There's nobody in there. Okay. Well, whatever you can supply, I mean, sure. that'd be great. Absolutely. Okay, any other comments? Excuse me, Madam Chair. Holly? Uh, I just wanted to, um, to follow up on, um, on Diane's comments, and, and uh, I think that we, we ran into this uh, last year when, at this, as you say, at this time of the year. Um, I, I think that uh, one of the things we've tried to do, and I hope that we will certainly continue as a board, uh, is to monitor uh, our expenses very carefully and um, we did find that last year we had to uh, we did have to tighten them up and um, we had to uh, increase the the actually I guess we instituted a freeze in January once we had found this out um, I think at this particular point this number co well helps us coincide with uh, with the council's final uh, final budget number but um, as we have in the past, I think we, uh, we've continued to, uh, to get regular reports on a monthly basis from the business manager. And, um, and I think that we've, we as a board have kept very close track of mm -hmm. our, our uh, expenses. And I would think we would continue to do that because I, I agree. I think we could run into that problem at this point. Who knows? So, um, but I thank you for... Uh, for the work that you've done on this, and also Mr. Kazaka, because um, this is a basically what some of the things that we're looking at here, which are savings, are uh, basically temporary types of um, uh, of band aids. Um, we're not going to be able to um, d to go with a long term sub in in positions next year. Uh, so we will have to st we will have to make decisions about whether we're going to hire people or whether uh, we're going to eliminate the positions. So this is this has been very well thought out. Thank you, John. I just had a quick question for Mike on the the deferral of the maintenance. Is that going to cause us a heartache going down the road where we're deferring maintenance? That's going to turn into more serious issues, uh, like renovation type issues, or are we going to be okay with a 70% cap on maintenance supplies? Well, what we're going to have to do here, John, obviously, is take a look at how how significant the need is in terms of the deferring the maintenance. Obviously, if it's something where there's a, an oil burner or a, a gas burner, excuse me, we don't use oil anymore, thankfully. Um, you have a gas burner that goes down. That's something that we absolutely have to replace. There's no no two ways about it there may be painting items or something along the lines that are more aesthetic um, those would be the items that would be uh, you know kind of going off to the to the side if you will we really need to prioritize and make sure that um, the buildings are safe and secure the buildings are warm uh, and the buildings are, are um, you know focusing on providing uh, a good environment for kids They're a long way away all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> I get used to my diminished circumstances. Yes. <laughs> Shout, John. <laughs> okay, anyone else? All right. I just have a... Um, I'm sorry, John. With regards to what Diane had said, um, I think we, you know, can agree with what she's doing, but I think with, with that being said, um, I believe that with Matt Kazaka in our finance office, he has a handle on what's going on, and I don't mm -hmm. think we would be spending stuff that just to spend that was the question I, I really wanted to get out there and you know you're mentioning what we need for hiring before the January 1 so I think the Finance Committee in, in January can review it again and come back um, I think you know at that point uh, you know we can uh, but I would have to think we're constantly reviewing it um, so we will be I, I, Diane, I understand your idea, and I, and I do think on a monthly basis when we get the reports, that would be our check to see if we need to go to a complete freeze again, and that might be what we'll have to do. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, anyone else? All right, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? So motion 6B passes. So we're going to move on to anyone wishing to make a public comment.
please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that we have a five minute limit. No one? Okay. Make sure you state your name and address. <laughs> I think you used 30 seconds there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like the humor already. Um, good evening, Russ Morin, uh, 495 Brimfield Road in town, uh, representing the 28th District. I uh, just wanted to uh, certainly congratulate uh, Ginger and Chris uh, for being newly elected and serving on arguably one of the most important uh, elected positions, I think, in town and state government. Uh, 22 years ago, I had the privilege of being sworn in to serve on the Board of Ed, and it was very rewarding, very difficult. So Chris and Ginger, I know you're up to the task. Also, um, to the re re obviously, those that are returning uh, through election and those that are in the midterms, I thank you for your service. Uh, one of the things that in Hartford we talk about all the time is I am able to brag a little bit about the high quality of education in this town. I'm able to brag about our students and the programs that we provide for them. And I'm able to do that with great pride. And that doesn't come without great efforts on all of your part. So I look forward, uh, as always, uh, I, my door is open. Uh, unfortunately, my phone number is in the book. Um, so <laughs> I certainly welcome uh, discussions from from you folks on things that uh, we're doing at the state that will have an effect and I've, I've had a terrific uh, relationship with chairwoman Granado and I think it was a wise choice for all of you to keep her in that position uh, because Thanks, it's the dialogue is very important when things are fluid and moving and and like anything else we do in life having that relationship having the ability to have an open uh, discussion and talk about things that are important to both sides and get a better understanding is great for all of us uh, Kevin congratulations you have some big shoes to fill I've served with John Morris for many years and uh, John's uh, been a terrific, he served on a lot of different things in this town and, and adds an awful lot to our community. So again, to all of you, I want to thank you for serving our town and uh, best of luck. I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Russ. Is there anyone else? Okay, any board comments? No? Okay, go ahead, Ginger. My husband just told me to talk into the microphone, and I always do what he says, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not. Um, I would like to thank the voters of Weathersfield for giving me the chance to serve on this board and all the campaign workers who did so much for all of us behind the scenes. Special thanks, of course, go to my husband, Jeff, as my biggest cheerleader and sounding board and my children, Alex, Becca, and Natalie, who are all poster children for the strength of the Weathersfield school system. I would also like to thank my fellow board members in advance for their patience with the new kid on the block. I plan to listen and learn from your experience. My sitting and listening should not be confused with any hesitation to take action. A century ago, my grandmother, Nani, a school teacher in the territory of Hawaii, got in trouble with the local school administration for literally standing up for what she believed in. I plan to follow her example here, hopefully without the getting in trouble part. <laughs> uh, by the way, she got elected to the State Board of Education in the state of Hawaii, um, so, which I didn't remember until today, so I guess Nani's been looking after me. Um, and finally, I promise never, ever to tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Great start, Ginger. <laughs> Anyone else for final comments? Chris. Well, I'm not going to promise not to tweet, but uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and congratulations to my good friend Kevin Hill on his, uh, on his election. Now you have two people telling you how bad things are in Hartford uh, from, both, from, from both sides of the aisle, so we'll have that covered. Oh, three people, that's true. Well, I wanted to um, thank, uh, obviously, the members of the community, the voters who, were, uh, who 
gave me their trust on election day along with all these other fine people. Uh, I'll try to live up to that responsibility uh, the best I can. I think this right before this meeting started, uh, seeing Mrs. Uh, Carvella and Fortuna's efforts just shows you what a great town we have. It was wonderful. And uh, I'm looking forward to supporting, obviously, the, the teachers, the parents, and the students as best I can. But most importantly, this is like the fourth team I've signed up for, and you have, we have the best mascot that I've ever had, so go Eagles. <laughs> I won't tell you what the other three mascots were, but this is definitely the best mascot ever. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Chris, and welcome. Anyone else? John? <clears throat> Thank you, Bobby. Uh, congratulations to everyone around the table, and uh, I look forward to working with all of you again. Um, it's, uh, I believe in teamwork, common sense, pride, and accountability, involvement and respect, service, family, and trust. I think those are key words for all of us when we sit up here. Um, I don't ask people, I don't ask of people to do things that I haven't already done or would not participate in. I feel I will continue to offer a solid presence as well as historical wealth of information that has happened within our community over the last 28 years. I am receptive to individuals who have questions and I'm always willing to listen to their constructive ideas. It is my honor and has been my honor to serve the town of Wethersfield for the past 28 years in a variety of positions. In 1989, I was elected to the Wethersfield Board of Education. I've served as vice chair, chairman, and in 1999 to 2009, I served on the town council. I am currently serving on the Board of Ed and recently was elected. The uh, didn't hit until my daughter posted on her Facebook page that uh, elect my dad uh, for the Board of Ed when he was first elected, he was in second grade. She was in second grade, ah. and her teacher was Bobby Granado. <laughs> yeah. So it's a big family, and it's really interesting how um, one of the things we all seem to forget that, that we are neighbors, we are a community, and we are friends. So we have a lot of uh, fiber and threads that go within our board, and we go along well. One of the other things I had the privilege is to give uh, several of you, your diplomas that are sitting around this. Not me. No, no, no. <laughs> you're me. Uh, no, you're older than I am. But um, the word community is very important, um, and I wouldn't be doing this for this many years. It keeps you young, it keeps you involved, it keeps you, gives you the ability to think. And believe it or not, every year is a new beginning um, and something new happens within the community and within the Board of Ed. I feel I live a good life, not only as a volunteer in Wethersfield, but as an individual that considers family an important part of decision making. I am very fortunate to have had the support over these last years of my wife, Kathy, and daughter, Kyleen, who have also been very involved in shaping young lives within our community. I'm also very lucky to have a wonderful family who have given me the excellent foundation. I am humbled, and it is a privilege to sit here and to support our children within our community. I've had an excellent foundation, and to that, I want to thank my mom and dad mm -hmm. for that. Thank you. That was great, John. Thank you. Anyone else? Kevin? Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Ginger and John, for your kind, kind words uh, earlier. And yeah, I was one of those people who did get my diploma from you, and thank you very much for that. Well, that was <laughs> um, it was a little shaky. <laughs> <laughs> you did good, Kevin. <laughs> but, uh, you know, piggybacking on that, I mean, you know, my, my family had to leave earlier because it is a school night, and we don't, you know, we have, we have responsibilities that we need to take care of at home. Um, but, you know, I was talking to Diane earlier about, you know, we're, we're all happy that, you know, the, the campaigns are over and the, the politics is, is set aside. But, you know, you think about it, there's nine people on this board who, who really have to work their tail off and run around town and, and, and meet people and get their message across just so you have the opportunity to 
to volunteer your time for your town. <laughs> it sounds silly, um, but that's how much this town means to not only me, but every single person on the dais here. Um, you know, and it's a lot of work and, you know, we slog through at times, but, you know, at first, you know, I look around, I do it obviously for my love of my town and for my kids because they're in the system, you know, and I was in the system. But then you come here and you go through these committee process and you learn people's perspectives that they've had. Like Elaine and Bobby have taught here for many years and look at them, you know, they're, they're back here again volunteering their time. And someone <laughs> like John, who's, who's served in the town for 20, 28 years, he's volunteered his time beyond being a parent, you know, a husband, and you know, as a career. Um, and now you have these new motivations that kind of get move you through uh, through the board level. So I thank you all. I appreciate it um, very much. I'm looking forward to the next few years working on the, working with this board. Thank you. Great. Okay. Anyone else? Polly. Um, first of all, John, I can't believe we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Both of us for four-year terms, because we're so young. I, know. <laughs> um, I also want to thank the, um, the people in Weathersfield who, uh, who did vote uh, and who basically expressed their continued support for me and for uh, this entire team. Uh, we would not be here without, uh, the, without the incredible support of not only people in town, but of our families and of uh, of our town committee and also of our young Democrats. And I know uh, that the young Republicans as well were very, uh, were very involved this year. And um, I really, I do believe that um, the, that the results that we saw this year have, uh, have absolutely cemented the, um, the belief that I have that this town supports uh, public education. And I appreciate the fact that we do have that support. We have it from the parents groups, from the um, from the women's resistance group, and from mm -hmm. the uh, from the students. Um, first of all, I want to thank my husband Dan Silver, who's also my campaign manager, who has encouraged me, walked door to door, and fed me after before and after all my meetings. Um, and also, although she's not here tonight, my, um, my terrific mother-in-law, Jane, who has been an inspiration and who I know is one of the people our, our board ratings depend on because she's a, a very loyal watcher. <laughs> and also, thank you to my sister-in-law, Trudy, who is, uh, who's here as well to support. Um, although they've both left, I did want to say my thanks and goodbyes to both Janet and Matthew. Um, we had a, uh, both, were, have been terrific people to work with, and I'm looking forward to working with, um, with Ginger. Uh, Jeff and I worked together off and on for years, um, library and insurance committee in various places, and I look forward to working with you as well, Chris. Um, one of the things that I found that was very interesting as I was going do door to door and I was talking to people on the phone was the fact that there was, there was the question of uh, why don't we have more civics? Why don't we improve our civics um, curriculum? And when I heard last night that um, only basically 70% of the people in this town did not vote in a local election, that, was all, that also was, was something that hit home for me of obviously we do need to continue uh, to strengthen our civics. Uh, curriculum, but I also think I'm very proud of the fact that we have students who, as I said before, we had the young Democrats uh, uh, clubs and the young Republicans who were very involved in the campaigns. They made phone calls, they uh, wrote postcards, and they stood at the polls with signs for various candidates, both sides. And not only in the politics, but also the, uh, the fact that we have so many students who are involved with, uh, with clubs that, are, that reach out to the community and are active in community service. And uh, so I think that it goes to show that we have an op opportunity here to continue to raise awareness as far as our students and also the, their parents are concerned because um, although people may think of politics as being a dirty word, it still is 
local and it's the most basic thing. And what we're doing up here, what the town council uh, does on a regular basis is really the basis for the education and for the services that, um, that this town provides. So I do want to say that I um, am really looking forward to working with this board. We've had a great time the last couple of years and, uh, and I think that uh, we'll continue to do so. We have a lot of work to do, so thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, well, <clears throat> I'd like to put my thanks in there um, for all of you for placing your confidence in me again to serve as chairperson of the Boithersville Board of Ed. It's an honor to serve with my colleagues, and we work together to make our school system truly special. And many, many times you may hear us say we're moving the system into the 21st century, and you often say, well, what exactly does this mean, and what are we doing as a board and as a system to achieve the goal of getting us to the 21st century? Well, let me explain, and first and most importantly, we're working to expose all our students to the many and changing opportunities of this new century and the diversity of roles they may play in it. You know, we're living in a time of incredible change in nearly all facets of our lives, but perhaps most profoundly in the technological innovation. There's an epic transformation occurring in the world of technology, just watch television for which our students must be prepared to recognize and accept. And you know, our kindergartners are graduating in 2030, and already we know that 65% of the jobs that they will take have not even been created yet. So what does a student need to be successful in this world that we're sending them out to and that we have such a difficult time to envision? Well, this board, administration, and teachers were focusing on educating our students to be critical thinkers, problem solvers, and wizards of technology. And second, we need a 21st century curriculum that enables us to reach the goal of educating every child. And led by Michael Emmett and Sally Destoli, we are putting in, and our outstanding teachers, we are putting in through professional development and a coaching model, um, the teachers are getting the knowledge of what our students need. I recognize that some of this change can be very stressful. I do talk to the teachers. They are given a very heavy workload. But as we work to empower them through a model called leadership, leadership, I know they will take charge and help us achieve our goals. And we just talked about our buildings. What do we need to make our schools 21st century facilities? Again, we need technology. The board and the administration are focused on providing a device to every student that will enable them in their reading, writing, gathering information, and communication skills, and that's just not social media. We are working to utilize the high school and the middle school as facilities where students can be exposed to their passions, their possible careers, emerging technologies and opportunities, and a chance to try things out sort of a road test for their future careers. And that's what our academy model is all about. And what guides a school system into the 21st century? A strategic plan. And that's gonna be our roadmap that allows us to focus on goals that will lead us to where we aim to go. And finally, how do we pay for this? Well, there's no question that we need the town's continued support but we're also very busy seeking new sources of funding to enhance and enrich our schools. The soon to be announced Weathersfield Public School Foundation will help us do just that. So let me leave you with this thought. Some say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I believe it takes a town to build a 21st century school system. And I know that we can count on this town for their support. So I want to thank you once again for this honor and to assure you that your confidence in all of us is very well placed. Thank you. Okay, Justin, now tell us what's going on at that high school. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Granato. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all of the newly elected and re-elected board members. Um, DECA is currently running our annual food drive for the Weathersfield Food Pantry. Members of the public can bring donations of non-perishable items to the donation box in the WHS main office until this Friday, November 17th. 
The fall induction to the National Honor Society will take place in the High School Media Center at 2.30 on Thursday of this week, November 16th. Congratulations to the nine new WHS students who will be inducted. WHS's Thanksgiving football game will be on Wednesday, November 22nd at 6 p.m. Please check the high school website for information regarding the toy and food drives that will be held during the game. Homecoming will take place this Friday, the 17th, from 7 to 10 p.m. in the cafeteria. And winter sports registration has begun. Students and parents should, should have received an email with more information. Please see our email, Athletic Director Mr. Maltesi, with any questions. Oh, it's Thanksgiving already. Thank you, mm. Justin. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other comments? All right. May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Okay, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all, and good night.